Where are we going? We're going episode five. How old is the earth? We're dinosaurs on the ark. And what's free will versus predestination? Boom. So I guess we I can. Lo- I love how. So read how she asked the question. She said free will versus predestination. Uh-huh. We're dinosaurs on the ark. Uh-huh. And how old is the earth? This is a topic that has been controversial in my family. Uh-huh. Okay. So it's a family problem. And nobody seems to know the answer. And they figured you did. Uh-huh. So not only did she give me how old is the earth, an almost impossible question to answer because nobody was around to, you know, yeah. and then were dinosaurs on the art. I wasn't on the art. I don't know. You know, and then free will and predestination, the two big, gigantic topics in scripture. Not only do I have three almost impossible questions to answer, I'm a, however I answer it, it's got a tendency to tear a family apart. That's what I'm understanding. It does. From the question. So I um, see you put your jersey on. I did. For this one. Game day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing my A game. Yeah. Trying to. Got to. All right. So let's do uh, how old's the earth first. How about that? All right. You believe in an old earth or a new earth? Young earth. Uh, young earth. How young are we talking? Six-ish thousand years ago. Okay. Well, let me start with this. Uh, if if you're listening, and uh, th- this all goes back to worldview. All right? We were talking about this earlier. E- every, every bit of what I'm going to talk about today goes back to worldview. So if you have a biblical worldview then you're going to go, okay, I can, I can go where you're going. Okay. All right. Even if you don't completely agree with what I'm saying, you can get where I'm getting because you have somewhat of a biblical worldview. If you have a secular worldview or a worldly worldview, then you're just going to have more questions, more debates, more, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, so it's almost like if you don't believe the, the, in the biblical worldview, then you can probably stop listening okay? because you ain't going to get whatever you want to get answered. Sure. You know, but if you'll be willing to, to, a, to a conversation at that point, you know, listen on and then submit some more questions. Yeah. And, and then we can, you know, if we get enough questions, we can address it and go a little bit deeper. But if we're trying to stay 20 ish, 25, 30 minutes, I mean, these are questions people debate about all the time. For years. You know, and we're going to try to answer it. Been, I know. It's, it's 30 been, minutes. Yeah. Christmas topic for how many years? I know. It's tearing me apart. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say this. Uh, so my my oldest daughter, really the whole family, but, but Cheyenne and Laurel love watching the Discovery Channel. Okay. Like they'll turn on the Discovery Channel and watch whatever. Here, Here's the deal about sharks. Here's this thing about cheetahs. Here's this thing about elephants. Like they'll just watch it all the time. So when you're watching a Discovery Channel show, um, they make comments in there like, okay, well, these creatures were alive, you know, three billion years ago or two billion years ago, this person walked the planet, you know, or this animal walked the planet. Um, and every time I got to stop, the show and I got to go, Hey, listen, they don't know that. Like they don't know that. Sure. You know? And she goes, well, why, why, why do they not know that? And I'm going, cause nobody was around back then. Like if the world is four and a half billion years, right. Which is what secular scientists say it is. If it is that old, how do they know? It ain't eyewitness account. No. You know? So the conversations I'm having to have with Laurel and really the rest of my kids, but mainly, mainly with Laurel right now, is whose who's word are we going to trust? Are we going to trust a whole bunch of uh, secular scientists that have gotten more things wrong than they've gotten right? Because that's what science is, right? True. I come up with a theory. I try to figure out if it's right. Oh, wait, that one's not right. Okay, well, I'll just move to the next one. You know. So am I going to trust them or am I going to trust the creator that said, let there be light. And there was light. Right. Does that make sense? Sure. So I think that's really what today boils down to is if we're going to answer these questions, you just got to understand how I'm going to answer them because I'm going to answer them from a biblical worldview. Now, do I have a whole bunch of questions about it? Yeah. Do I have some thoughts about it? Yeah. But ultimately I got to submit my thoughts to the word of God or I don't have a biblical worldview. 
Sure. And I know that may ruffle some feathers of some Christians too, you know, and I'm going, well, I mean, I'll believe the Bible, but I just don't believe it when it comes to that. No, that's not how this works. You either believe it or you don't. Sure. It, it is either your base of what you place all of your beliefs on, or you can't place any of them in, on there. Does that, does that make sense? It it, makes it's sense. not a, it's not a, you can take some and leave the other. It's a, you take all of it or leave it. Right. And that's the whole conversation with Laurel is now, okay, well, how old is the earth? I guess 6,000 years old. Well, scripture would tell you it's somewhere around there. Sure. Right. So, so I'll just take you, let's, let's just go Genesis chapter one. And you can read this later on here. I'm going to give you everything I'm going to do. Genesis chapter one, verse five, verse eight, verse 13, verse 19, verse 23, and verse 31. And I'm not going to go through it all, but I'm just going to read a, a couple of them. So Genesis chapter one, verse five. Look at what it says. It says an evening passed and morning came. That was the first day. So the kicker of all of this creation story is the word day. So the Hebrew word for day is yom, or that's South Alabama pronunciation of a Hebrew word, right? So Y-O-M is the word. So that the literal definition of the word Y-O-M is one solar day, because that's the question. I mean, you were talking about that earlier. Right. You're going, okay, well, was it one full, like 24-hour day like we have? Or was it a day that lasts a thousand years? Was it one day that, you know? So the Hebrew word that's written down is one solar day. So the sun came up and the sun went down, right? And for ever how long we know it to be coming up and going down was a solar day, a 24-hour day. So when God's creating light, when he's creating the waters, when he's creating the sky, when he's creating really land, when he's creating Adam and Eve, when he's creating land animals, which is going to get to our whole dinosaur issue in just a minute. But when he's creating all that, when it says uh, evening went and morning came, right? That's one day. So if, if you take that biblical worldview and you start talking about how old the earth is, uh, then from Adam to Abraham was about 2,000 years. Abraham to Jesus was about 2,000. And then Jesus to today's about 2000. So when he created Adam, it's about 6,000 years. Now I will push back, not on the 6,000 year part, but I'll give some historical scientific stuff. Cause I know if people are watching this and they're trying to figure this thing out, they're wanting, they're wanting something. They ain't just wanting, okay, well it's 6,000 years because that, you know, I, I, how did we get from this? to believe in now the earth is four and a half billion years old. Because if you do some research, you'll find out that up until about the 1700s, you had scientists that believed in a young earth. Like they believed biblically the creation account. So something happened that's around the mid 1700s that kind of sparked all that. And I wrote all these names down so you can go and, and you can figure them all out. But James Hutton was the first one. And, and he came with this whole idea of, of, naturalist type deal. Like if I can look back and go, okay, here's how the earth worked then, then that has to be how the earth worked now. And everything that was created and everything that will be created has to be created in a natural way. Which if you're a follower of Jesus, we're not believing that. You don't believe that because you've seen supernatural power work in your life. Like you've seen him take you from death to life. And it's not by your works, it's his works. It's a supernatural, like, salvation is a supernatural event. Like you can't get it on your own, right? And he supernaturally made a way for you and I to be reconnected to God. So this whole idea from James Hutton was this whole thing of trying to figure out how to doubt that the earth was 6,000 years old was his whole goal because if the earth happened to get here based off of what happened in the past, then we know from that point going forward, we can prove it the same way because it all happens naturally. And when, when you believe the creation account, when it says the, the earth was dark and full of void and God said, let there be light. There ain't nothing natural about that. 
And maybe a lot of stuff happened in that, that compounded it that would make you think it was older. Yeah. Because he created sure. Adam as a grown man. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. If it's natural, if your whole belief is everything that happens has to be natural, well, then I'll push back on that too. Uh, the Big Bang wasn't natural. That's no. not natural. No. If that's where you're basing all of the belief on, on, on is this whole naturalism type thing, there's a whole lot of flaws in that. There's a whole lot of holes in that. Right. But I think what's interesting is the is the track that you took from 1700 to, to moving forward. So James Hutton came, tried to make you doubt creation. Right. That the earth is six thousand years old, that a day was a day. He tried to make you doubt that. Then you move on into the 1800s. This guy named Charles, Charles Lyell came and he, he had a. He's actually quoted in one of his phrases about science. He says, well, it's my whole job to free science from Moses. Sure. So you got a guy in the 1800s that's coming and going, okay, well, I want to make sure science is free from the Bible. Okay, so just think about these guys who are coming in that's starting up until 1700. You got scientists believe in the Bible. I guess the Bible bothered them. Uh Uh-huh. It bothers a lot of people, don't they you think? They just said, I'm trying to get my theories out there, uh-huh. and I can't have the Bible in the way. Yep. They're a little too egotistical, maybe. Yep. So now you got this guy, Charles Lyell, who's who's trying to make people doubt the flood, right? Because now he's he's going, okay, the rock patterns of this and the rock patterns of that. It has to have, you know, so now you've got, okay, well, well, less James Hutton goes, you less figure out how to make people doubt that the earth is 6,000 years old. Then you got Charles Lyell going, okay, well, let's, let's just go ahead and take religion out of it completely. And let's try to make people doubt the flood, which you ain't got to be a follower of Jesus or be a Christian to have some historical documents that show a flood, right? Almost every other religion known to man has some version of the story of the flood. Sure. So we got a layer you, of coal, you know, so it point to a flood. Yeah. So yeah. now you're in the 1800s and you've got two guys so far, one in the 1700s, one in the 1800s, that their whole basis is to try to take the Bible right out of science. And then you get up to what I think a lot of us know, this, this name of Charles Darwin, right? Oh, yeah. And, and I think that's the one that we know more so than any of the other ones. But his whole idea was to make people doubt in a creator. So now you take this evolutionary mindset. Well, okay, well, the earth is this amount of years old because, you know, it's, it's not from a creator. Mm-hmm. It's from evolution. Um, and that's not biblical. So if you're going to base your thoughts and your beliefs on some of these guys, then you're going to be basing your worldview on a secular worldview. Now, I don't know if James Hutton was married or not, but let me just ask you just a really practical question. Um, if, if James Hutton was married and you had access to talk to his wife for a second and you asked her one question, has James ever been wrong? She going to say yes. She going to say yeah. Yeah. And so would every other married couple on the planet. You, you, sure. if I went over and asked your wife, come on, I said, Hey, has Dex ever been wrong? Right. She's going to say he's wrong right now. I don't right. know what he's doing, but he's wrong. He's, right, he's yeah. wrong. <laughs> See, and Cheyenne would say the same thing about me. So if I'm going to base my belief, like I'm going to anchor my faith to something because you believe in you saying God doesn't exist and believe in what any of these guys say is faith. Everybody has faith. It takes faith to believe in God and faith to not believe in him. Right. But if I'm going to anchor my faith to what some of these guys say, if they have a track record of being wrong. Then I mean, how secure in my belief am I? If they have a track record of getting rid of a creator or Mm -hmm. getting rid of the Bible and science. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that invest in a lot of things. They may invest in Bitcoin, Mm -hmm. the stock market. If you said, hey, man, I need to invest in something. You can bet I'm going to say real estate. That's what I do, and mm-hmm. that's what I believe in. Yeah. And I'm going to build a case, and if you listen to it, you're going to say, you know what? That's the best thing. And I do. Mm-hmm. I believe it's the best thing to yeah. invest in. 
And if you bought into what I was saying, you would feel the same way. And mm-hmm. I believe that in my heart. And these got, that doesn't mean it is. Yeah. There's a lot of people that got rich on the stock market. And there's yeah. a lot of people that got rich in Bitcoin. Yeah. But I'm going to have a biased opinion. Mm-hmm. And if these guys' whole basis was to get rid of a creator, they had a biased opinion yeah, when they, they made their theory. Yeah. I mean, that's the same thing. I was listening to Dave Ramsey podcast the other day. He's big on on real estate. Yeah, he's right. Right? He's he, right. Yeah. But the comment he makes is... But if you don't know real estate, don't do that. Sure. That's 100%. You'll get in trouble. Uh-huh. In a heartbeat. And so I think a whole lot of people don't know what these guys actually believed or why they believe what they believe, and they're getting themselves in trouble. Yeah, or maybe you if know? you don't know God, you might not need to, uh, they might need to do some soul searching before they go against him. I mean, you can drop the mic right there. Yeah. I think that was a good one. <laughs> I mean, but I do think you can make a case. I mean, Exodus 20, right? Let's read this one, and then this would be my, let's get to the dinosaurs. I want to do the dinosaurs. Okay. That one's cool. Um, Exodus 20, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. And that's why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. So to me, if he created everything he sees in six days, a solar day, then that's my basis of belief of how old the earth is. It's about 6,000 years old. And that's because I have a world view that's based on the Bible. Sure. Which now leads you to... Another question that's crazy, and she asked it, right? Were dinosaurs on the ark? Well, let's throw this out. If you believe that the earth is four and a half billion years old, then no, they weren't on the ark. Because, I mean, they somebody who existed a hundred million years ago isn't going to be on the earth, right? 42, 4,500 years ago when the flood happened. Right. So they wouldn't be on the ark. But if you have a biblical worldview of going, okay, well, really the world's only a couple thousand years old anyway, then now that leads you to believe, okay, the dinosaurs might be on the ark. So now comes a whole slew of other questions, right? Sure. I got some just thinking. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, well, how, how did they fit on the ark? Yeah, that's my first one. Okay. How do they, it, and it's the cool, so you were talking about a while ago, you're, you're all into real estate. I think it's the best way to make money. I think it's the best investment that you can make. Okay. So you're going to be prone to lean that way. Sure. And if you were guiding me financially, you would guide me there. Right. Instead of guiding me anywhere else. Well, if you take a tour of the ark, right, in Kentucky, if you, if you go up there, man, it's incredible. I would tell you to go. Um, they have a lean as well. And the lean is to a biblical worldview. All right. And that's how we're answering the question. So a lot of scientists, um, biblical scientists that actually go through and and try to figure this stuff out, too, is um, this this whole idea of, okay, if we took two of every kind, then how many dinosaurs were on the ark? And why in in the span of what the ark, the size of that is, how would all the dinosaurs fit? Which leads you back to the whole thought of, okay, we probably, when Adam was, uh, when Noah was leading everybody up, right? He wasn't going, okay, well, there's a wolf. Okay, there's a German shepherd. Okay, there's a lab. Okay, there's a coyote. Right. Uh, he, he wasn't loading all them up. He was going, okay, what's a, what's a canine? Right. Okay, let me take a male and a female of a canine. Okay, well, you, you probably only had two canine types of animals on the ark right and then once once all of that happened okay now now the floodwaters have gone down go back out repopulate the earth all that stuff now all of that those two canine types of dogs now formulate all of the types of dogs we got now with human intervention or i'm just gonna run off and that one looks pretty good, so I'm going to do what I do with that one. And now you've got all these creations. Right. right. you got all the dog types now because you got dog lovers who are going, okay, well, I like a dog, but I'm, 
I'm hypoallergenic and, you know, I'm allergic to all that. So I want to create a dog that's going to look a certain way or be a certain thing, but not shed. True. Right. So now you got the, 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 what do you have now? You got the, uh, something with poodles. I don't know about the poodles. Uh, name a dog. Man, look at pit bulls. Oh, well, pit bulls. How many same, different, same that's thing. a breed within itself. Yeah. They're getting colors. They're getting yeah lines yeah. to go in them. I see them all the time on Facebook. I don't even have dogs, but everybody's like, look at this pit bull. It looks like a cougar. I know. You know? And then you charge more money. Yeah. Because of the cool thing, the cool factor. Yep. Right? So, so when you got a poodle that's bred with. A fox terrier. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what people want now. Well, that's or not... a uh, a golden retriever. Yes. Then you got a golden, golden doodle. doodle. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Right. It, he didn't look and go. There's some golden doodles. Let's get them on the ark. You know, I mean, yeah. it's one type. So if you're looking at dinosaurs, uh, the the belief is if you have a biblical worldview, the belief is okay. We well, probably only took one kind of dinosaur. So if I'm in charge of loading the ark, I ain't going, that one's way big. Let's take it. Right. I'm going, okay, what, what can get on the ark in the space that I need it to be in so that I can do what God told me to do, but still survive and have enough room. Right. So he didn't take everything, a bronchiosaurus and a T-Rex and a, he, he didn't take all that. Uh, from what biblical scientists believe is he took a male and a female that were probably around teenager size and he put them in the ark. And then when they got off rock and roll, there we go. You know, um, now the whole carbon dating and all that stuff comes into play and you got more questions now than you got answers, you know, because, okay, well, what if that scientist found those bones and they were 160 million years old? Okay. Let's let, let me address that one and then we'll move. Um, so there's two types of scientists really that have a play in this conversation. You got the observational scientists or the historical scientists, right? So the observational scientists, they, they take, they, they take a liquid here to liquid here and they pull it together and they figure out what it makes, right? It's observational science. Like I see it happening. And then you got historical science. Well, when you come at me and you go, okay, well, I got these dinosaur bones that are 135 million years ago. That blows your 6,000 year old earth out of the question. You, you can't prove that in the lab. Right. You're trying to take historical science, right? And try to make me believe it because of what you observed. Well, you didn't observe that, right? You can't take. 130 million old bones and put it in a laboratory and recreate it. You can't take historical science and make it observational science. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause they're saying humans came at about 12,000 years ago. I mean, if you want to say if, that, if it evolved from 12,000 uh -huh. years ago and then you have all these other things that are billions of years old, mm -hmm. would it have really taken that long for a human to evolve? And then, would there not have been something that's been evolving for billions of mm -hmm. years that a human couldn't have popped up and took over the world? Mm -hmm. Or why are we continuing not to evolve? Yeah. Because I guarantee you. I got put, an iPhone right here and I was thinking when I woke up this morning, I was like, I hope it's that new iPhone 14. Uh -huh. I want it to evolve a little bit. And it, didn't, it didn't, did it? No. Yeah. It's still the 12. I know. Yeah. Still the 12. Yeah. You, you ask a mom, okay, if, if humans were created 12,000 years ago. And, and evolution, you know, is correct. Don't you think moms would have evolved to like four, five, six, seven, eight, ten hands? Mm-hmm. But they still got yeah, teeth. Tarantula. Yeah, tarantula. Yeah. 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 I mean, because they need it. Yeah. So it all goes back to worldview. Everything we're talking about is a worldview. I mean, if are you going to believe in a creator? Charles Darwin tried to get you not to, right? But there's a whole bunch of holes there. There's not really holes in creation. There's just more questions, you know, and, and the Bible says right now, you and I live with, with shades over our eyes. We're blinded. We don't, we don't see clearly, but then he says, but one day you will see clearly. So do I want to trust somebody who obviously got evolution wrong? Because don't you think he would have figured out a way not 
to go through what he went through yeah and live through the pain that he lived through if he could have done something about it am i going to base my faith in that or am i going to base my faith in a creator that says once you get here i'll tell you right you know which brings up a whole another question to me is once we get there will we really want to know or are we just going to be in awe of who he is yeah because really what you they're know? saying is hey don't worry about getting there Mm -hmm. and we're not going to answer the question. We're just going to debate the question for oh, yeah. generations and generations, oh, yeah. hundreds of years yeah. now. And we want you to believe science yeah. and then hope you don't get there. But yeah. if, if you do, we're sorry. We're sorry. That's what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't have, they don't have any vested interest in the game other than money. No. You know, I'll sell enough books. I'll create it. You, you know, that's money just and money. Pride, yeah. yeah. And I just want my name in a history book. Yeah. You know, well, there's been a name in, it's a, there. In, a, we even in a history today. book. You know, you know, there's yeah. a name in a history book that's got a track record. Yep. You know, and that track record's pretty good. That's true. That's pretty good. Yep. So I don't know how you answer a question like that other than I would take all your questions back to the Bible and try to figure it out. You know, so how old's the earth? I think it's 6,000 years old. And you do think there were Biblically. some... Teenage dinosaurs on the ark. I do think that's a possibility. Yeah. Was I there? Mm -mm. I wonder if they had like. So I don't know. Disciplinary problems being teenage dinosaurs. I'm sure they did. Yeah. Out I'm of sure control. Yeah. I mean, anything teenager wise has some disciplinary problems. So I was thinking, I'd have tried to get like an infant dinosaur. Yeah. I guess a you little could, baby. You can't milk a dinosaur. Uh, well, you can't feed them. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So. But I guess he could have done what he wanted to because that leads us right into free will. That's true. Could he have done whatever he wanted to do? I guess he had the, the reins. Or was it predestined? I don't know. I don't know. So I jotted some stuff down uh, because this one's the age-old question, right, um, that folks have. And I, I just want to I want to give you some scripture because this ain't what's, what's Eric think about the situation, uh, no matter what the podcast is called. Um, to me... Right now, everything's got to be based in Scripture, right? That's my biblical worldview. So if you start looking at free will, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. It says, well, let's just go with 3. It says, this is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. So... This shows us that he wants everyone to be saved. So that gives me the ability to understand, okay, well, if he wants everybody to be saved, but not everybody is saved, then that gives me some sort of free will to believe in him or not. Right? You yes, make sir. a play for that. The Bible also says that, that God is the only one who can draw people to repentance. So, so I can't get saved without God. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so now you've taken my free will and it's like, okay, but you put a little predestination in there now. Maybe but, you have a calling on your life. Yeah, maybe so. Right. So let me take you there. Right. Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. Come on, I'm gonna know where my Bible is right here in just a second. Ephesians chapter one. Verse five. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Okay, now look at verse 11. This is furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Basically, what you're saying is you're not Brian McKnight. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I don't. I you get that, that one confused. I get that one confused with Space Jam. What is it? I, I believe I can fly. That's Space that's Jam. It. That's Space Jam. Right? Is it not Brian? Is that Knight? Brian? I don't know. That was. Uh, see, I was. I'm a little bit younger than you, so I'm not as versed on the topic. Yeah. I. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to go ask Kevin or something. Yeah, he'll uh, know for sure. Pastor He's Kevin, older know. than both of us. He'll know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he'll know. <laughs> yeah. We. Uh, I, that. To, but to me, though, free will can't be described like that. Because I can't do, I'm bound by time, I'm bound by gravity, I'm bound by my skills, I'm bound by my ability, I'm bound by my sin, right? So so if you base free will on doing whatever you want, that's a flawed definition of free will anyway. 
Okay. Cause you can't do whatever you want. Right. So I guess. So the question is, okay, what do you have the choice to do then? So I do think you have the free will of morality. Like you have the free will to choose what you will or won't do or the character you will or won't have or the integrity you will or won't live with. Sure. Right. So ultimately free will, you just got to land on the decision of, okay, well, I'm, I'm free to choose morality, but I'm not free to choose whatever I want to. Right. Because if God is all knowing, then God knew when he created you to begin with what you were going to do. Right. I guess that's why he has to choose people. You he would puts think. a calling on you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a gut intuition mm -hmm. and he's choosing people that he already knows will act on that intuition. And some yep. people may even take almost their entire life before they act on that intuition. Mm -hmm. But that's why they say God has perfect timing, right? Because mm -hmm. it happens when he needed it to anyway. Oh yeah. So there's a little bit of, a little bit of both. Yeah. Well, I think when you look back and take a biblical worldview, right? Cause that's where we have to land all day to day to answer right? any of these questions. The Bible doesn't talk any really at all about free will. It doesn't give you, you know, other than you got a free will to choose whether you like lemonade or sweet tea. Sure. You got a free will if you're going to steal from this guy or choose to be honest. You got mm -hmm. free will to take somebody's life or not to. Like you have the ability to do that. Um, but ultimately, you and I have to trust in the sovereignty of God if we're going to be a person who has a biblical worldview. So if God is the one who draws us to repentance you know, from his kindness. If he's the one who draws us in, if he's the one who started a good work in me and will be faithful, right, to complete it, right? If he's the one who started salvation in me to begin with, then I've got to trust the sovereignty of God. I'm going to make decisions, right? And I'm going to try to make them based on a moral compass that I have of believing what scripture says. But ultimately, if I could save myself and I didn't need God, then you and I wouldn't be having this conversation anyway. That's right. So the sovereignty of God, I got to place a whole lot of my belief on that, that he's going to finish what he started in me. Because if it's left up to me, I'm going to screw it all up. Right? That is, we're, that's just what we do as people. You screw, screw it up. Right? Yep. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel like when you start talking about free will, you just got to take the definition and you got to figure out what, biblically what that's talking about so you have the right i believe to choose morality i mean you've got the right to choose stuff like that but when it comes to predestination um i also think that god is sovereign over the world he knew who was going to choose to believe in him and who wasn't um and then he is the one who's going to finish my salvation which he gave to me when I was 10 years old. Sure. You know, he's going to finish that out and I've got to trust him in that. Right. So free will, probably not the way people are thinking. That's not, that's not biblical. I can't do whatever I want whenever I want. Like you just can't, you can't right. go break into somebody's house just because you want to. So I guess the you free know, will and not give, get any kind of it'll, punishment. It'll give somebody against God the ability to, to write things up like, hey, this is why you don't need to believe in the creator because here's how old I found the earth. Oh, yeah. They had the free will to do that. Yeah. And then somebody else had the free will to combat that just like you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And I guess as long as we are combating those items as a, as a whole for our human race, yeah. God's going to, to take note of that and hope that we uh, keep fighting the good fight and let us, yeah. let us keep going. Yeah. Well, that's like in our 30 for 30 right now. You know, if you're not in that, you need to jump in that too, by the way. I need to get in that. I just jump in. Um, I got to jump out a bit. I, we started, well, the first couple of days were in second Chronicles and it was talking about, you know, a, a couple of Kings so far. Right. So we read about three Kings back to back to back and the, the dad first, right. Didn't believe in God. Hmm. He put a whole bunch of idols in front of him, right? Then King Hezekiah, his son, came along. He righted the wrong, right? He started focusing everything on God, started giving everything to him. 
And then when he died, his son took over, right? King Manasseh, he took over. And the Bible says that initially he started uh, not believing in God. He started putting everything above God, he, you know, but something shifted. Some people came in and attacked him. And then he, the Bible says he humbled himself and he cried out to God and God heard him and came running. Mm. So was he predestined to believe in God? Did he have the free will to not believe in God? You know, you got more questions now than you got answers. And that might have gone back to God's timing. Yep. He wanted to he make an example mm -hmm. out of him. He yep. wanted to say, hey, you don't have to believe in me, but things will get much better when you do. Oh, yeah. Well, you can, you can take this, and we can't, I mean, we got to wrap it up, I know. But you can take this, and you can talk about Calvinism. You can take this, and, and I mean, you can have five-year debates on the t questions that we got right now. Oh, yeah. I just think ultimately, and to close it out, I mean, I think if, if you're going to believe in Jesus, then you got to have a biblical worldview. And if you don't, then I would say that those are areas in your life where you're not allowing him to have access into. So I would push back and challenge you to be submissive in every area of your life to let him have access to it and a say. And then even if it isn't what I want to believe, if I'm going to have a biblical worldview, because I believe in Jesus, then I got to change my belief to what he says. Sure. So I would take all these and take it back to the Bible. Yeah. Don't, don't take it back to another article. Don't take it back to what this person said or what she said or what he said or this scientist. I mean, at the end of the day, I got to read the word. Just look at the Bible. I got to read done. the word. If that's where I'm going to place my worldview. If not, then you don't really care what we got to say anyway. Right. So... Next week, we Woo. got some more questions. Woo, man, we got we got questions that are talking about boundaries. How do you set boundaries for your life? Um, we got questions on how do you deal with your faults and your failings and mm. and all that. We got questions on uh, how to know if the people in my life are leading me in the right way. You talk about a hard question. That one's oh, gonna be yeah. difficult to address too. Um, so I think we got a couple of those coming up next week. Yeah, big week. A lot of tough questions. Stay tuned. Come on. Yeah. We'll be back. Submit your questions. Yeah. Get it in. Keep them coming. These are helping me. Absolutely. Grow with me. Yeah. I Have to. It. Can't can't help but not grow when you start talking about dinosaurs. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. I love it. All right. We'll see you next week for next episode. Absolutely. Boom.